hundred tons of um, dead fish came up in uh, in Manila, Philippines. More than two dozen seals washed up in New Jersey. 308 baby whales, baby whales, in the waters around the peninsula of Valdez along Argentina's uh, Patagonian coast. This is the single largest great whale die-off on record. In July 2010, seven whales washed up along the coast of uh, Ghana. In May, 1,200 antelope found dead in Kazakhstan. 1,200, I mean 12,000, not 1,200, 12,000 antelope dead in Kazakhstan. Now, Kazakhstan may be different because we know that Kazakhstan has been a, um, a place of a lot of nuclear testing and bomb testing and you know, it's probably just extremely contaminated. So that may explain some of that there. In, in June of 2010, thousands of baby spotted uh, filefish washed up on the shores of the Cayman Islands near Cuba. In August, six million fish and a thousand alligators, turtles, and dolphins, other uh, river wildlife, died in Bolivian rivers. Nothing like this has ever been seen in Bolivia. Thousands of migratory uh, shearwater birds found dead on Queenland Island. 33 pilot whales beat themselves in uh, Rutland Island, Ireland. 83,000 dead drumfish washed up along the Arkansas River. Thousands of dead fish found in Haiti. 80 dead pigeons fell from the sky in um, in Canada. Thousands of dead fish found in inside um, the Sydney Airport beaches near Charleston, South Carolina, littered with hundreds of dead starfish and jellyfish. Several million red uh, tilapia fish died in Cairo, in the district, um, and also in Vietnam. Thousands of dead birds found in Manitoba, Canada. A hundred tons of dead fish washed up in Brazil. A hundred tons! Thousands of fish turned up dead in Lupi Lupi City in the Philippines. Shortly after midnight, New Year's Eve, 3,000 between 3,000 um, and, and 5,000 red-winged blackbirds fell from the sky in Bibi, right here in the U.S. Started with dead birds mysteriously falling from the sky all over the world. Thousands of birds fell in Arkansas, California, Missouri, Louisiana, Kentucky, Sweden. Blackbirds are dropping out of the sky in New Zealand. 200 starlings in Italy. 40 turtle doves in, um, also in Italy. America has the most recorded mass, mass deaths in 2011 and 2012. 300 dead birds in Alabama. 3,000 birds fell in Arkansas. 100 dead pelicans found on the beach in uh, Topsail Island. 200 dead starlings in South Dakota. Hundreds of dead birds in Texas. Ohio, 200 dead geese and ducks along Lake Erie. The million fish found dead in Florida. Hundreds of dead birds in Colorado. Hundreds of dead Atlantic striped bass in North Carolina. 50 birds from uh, found dead in Indiana. 120 birds found in Tennessee. Thousands of trout die in Carolina coasts. Hundreds of birds found in western Kentucky. Hundreds of dead fish in Detroit. Michigan, thousands of fish found dead in Florida Creek. 500 dead birds from, uh, uh, fell out of the sky in Louisiana. 100,000 dead fish washed ashore at the Arkansas River. Hundreds of dead birds found in the street in Murray, in Kentucky. Hundreds of dead birds on the highway in Louisiana. Hundreds of birds fell dead in um, all over Louisiana. Two million dead fish found floating in the Chesapeake Bay in Maryland. 100 pelicans found along the beach in uh, top sale. 200 dead starlings in um, Yankton in South Carolina. Hundreds of birds dead in Oklahoma. Hundreds of birds in on California Highway. Thousands of dead grizzled shred uh, shadfish turned up in 
Chicago, thousands of fish washed up in Ohio beaches, millions of small fish found dead in Redondo Beach, California. A foot deep layer of dead fish flooded the King Harbor Marina in Los Angeles. Millions of jellyfish beached themselves in um, uh, in Florida. Twenty thousand fish found dead in te- in a Texas lake. I mean, this list goes on and on and on, and you can't go. And that's not that's half of the list. I could go on and on and on about this. What's going on here? Birds dropping from the sky, increased in tornadoes. Unexplained earthquakes were, uh, uh, you heard in that clip, they're having long series of earthquakes in places where there's no known fault. Uh, I mean, is is this this magnetic pole change? Well, look, when I did this, this program on this magnetic, magnetic pole change, <laughs> I'll say this, that what they say is happening is that as this pole starts to switch, the rotation of the Earth and the magma in the Earth's core start to um, rotate and circulate at, uh, at, at different speeds. And, and the inertia causes the interior core of the Earth, according to them, I'm not saying this, according to them, causes the interior core of the Earth to heat up um, hotter than what it usually is. So I, I'm thinking this is just like uh, when you eat something spicy. Things start stirring up in there, you know. They start heating up and you know, stuff starts moving around down there and it gives you heartburn or it gives you gas. And, you know, if, if this is what it's doing to the Earth's core because, because of the inertia being different from the rotation of the Earth to the, to the molten core, then, you know, maybe this is just the Earth expelling some energy. You know, the same that somebody would, you know, burp or, you know, however they pass gas. Uh, it, 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 literally an earth fart, you know, it, it could very well be um, because that makes sense. You know, if, the, if you have extra energy in the core, it's got to come out somewhere. Well, you know, back to this UFO thing, it, it kind of coincides with that, too, because if the earth is giving off this pressure of energy, or um, uh, extra heat, whatever it is, it would obviously follow the path of least resistance, which would be through openings in the Earth. That would be volcanoes or between the tectonic plates. This would explain, not that it does, but it, it would explain um, it would explain earthquakes in places where there's no real known fault um, because, you know, things are rumbling around down there. Um, you know, they're, they're getting mixed up a little bit, and it's got this extra energy it needs to release. You know, so maybe it's uh, searching for that path of least resistance, and as it does that, it shakes things up a little bit. Um, maybe it could be that uh, this energy is drawing something from um, outer space, a UFO that's drawn to it, you know. Um, maybe these asteroids, um, these meteors, are being drawn because of the uh, magnetic pole shift. You know, if if the Earth mag- magnetic pole um, increases or decreases in certain areas, which obviously it's going to do during this magnetic pole shift, if it increases someplace and lessens someplace else, we may have a magnetic pole that's stronger um, and one that's weaker, and it may be moving around a little bit. Maybe that's pulling them in closer closer than what it normally would. You know, that would be an explanation. Not necessarily that that happens. But if you're a thinker, if you're somebody that thinks these things through and you have the ability of critical thought, then you can think of the consequences that might happen from this magnetic pole shift, all the way from the animals, the birds, um, the unexplained earthquakes in places where there's no fault, um, the, the UFOs, the increase in meteors. Um, I heard a discussion recently that was really interesting um, about Planet X because uh, a couple of years ago I did a little research into Wormwood or Planet X, um, the different names that it has. Uh, there are researchers who claim that they have seen this thing 
but only the outline of it, that it's not visible to the naked eye because they say this is a brown dwarf planet that's made of iron, and it's ox oxidized iron. Now, everybody knows when iron oxidizes, it's red. The oxidation on iron is red. And it, because it's iron, it has this terrific magnetic pull, pull on it, so it, it draws in everything near it. Well, it being oxidized, it doesn't reflect light. So you wouldn't be able to look out there and see it because it doesn't reflect light. But they say that during the winter and summer solstice that you can see it because um, you can see the outline of it because there's a light behind it. So you can see the outline of it. you see what I'm saying? You're not looking at it directly. You're seeing the outline of it because of some light that's behind it, only visible during the winter and summer solstice. So if this if this thing is actually out there, and the Bible talks about wormwood, and it also, we just talked about it, turning the uh, sun dark and the moon as blood. Well, if this thing came by us close enough and it had this huge magnetic um, tail of, of oxidation and it's pulling all this debris with it, if it even came close to our atmosphere, it could turn the moon red because it, it's red oxidation. Uh, just a possibility. I'm just throwing that out there, but it it, it would kind of make sense. So um, now, as, uh, as usual, we're going to have some listeners that are going to drop off here in a couple minutes. Some live listeners. <clears throat> Everybody else, though, uh, stay right where you are. Everybody that's on the switchboard, stay there. Everybody's listening through any of the other networks or iTunes or any of the social networks or you folks overseas. Uh, you'll still be able to hear me. There's just a small number of people that are about to drop off in a couple minutes. Everyone else, though, you stay tuned here because we're still going to talk about um, these superbugs before I got off on this little rant. Uh, we're going to talk about these superbugs. i got to cover this because the, these are drug-resistant superbugs. These are um, bugs that uh, they're unable to treat. And it's also um, – it's not just out there. Um, you're also finding it in hospitals and in our food because there's a certain amount of E. coli that's in all like meats. But it's killed if you cook it properly. These staph infections, um, if cooked properly, you can kill these things. If not cooked properly, you may get one of these superbugs that's not treatable. So when it comes to washing your hands or washing the, the surface that you deal with meats, it's it's more important than ever to, to to make sure it's sterile. Now I have a clip I'm going to play here in a few minutes um, that's going to illustrate that. Uh, because in this clip they say if you if you cut up a chicken on your counter and you don't clean it properly and you have a baby and you go to make the baby's bottle on that same counter, you could be giving this staph infection transferred from the counter to your hand to that baby bottle and giving it to your baby directly. So it's more important now because these are superbugs for cleanliness and um, and cleaning up after yourself properly. So we're going to discuss those superbugs here um, in just a minute. I'm going to take a short break um, to allow some of our listeners who are about to drop off to either call in at 760-283-4605, and you can listen to the rest of the program uh, live. That's 760-283. 4605. Um, and for everyone else, we're just going to take a short break here, but we will be right back. Whatever you do, don't go away. You're listening to W. Dean Shook, in time prophecy news and current events. Stay tuned. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and the end of the age? Mm. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginnings of birth pains. For then there will be great distress, unequal from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equal again. 
those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun would...